You ready to rock out with our stocks out? <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is Monday. It's July 29th. Now, I'm going to do what I always do on these videos, and I'm going to share some information with you on a hot penny stock. Now, who says it's hot? I do. <laughs> who am I? I'm a nobody. That's why I always say follow behind me with your own due diligence, folks. But I do trade penny stocks every single day from bell to bell. These are stocks under five bucks that are on every single market. And I'm always looking for a stock that has heat, that has the potential to make us money. And when I go looking for heat in a stock, I'm talking about the charts because I can see heat in a chart. You can see a breakout setup or higher highs and higher lows, or you can see a run that's been going for days. Well, when you see a chart that has heat, then go through that company's press releases and filings looking for some hot information, not just from today or yesterday or even this week. Go back a month. News is wood. Your hot chart is the fire. We're bringing the wood to the fire. Even a stale piece of wood can get that fire going. So if you find a hot piece of news to go with your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to bring to your attention. And I've got one for us right now. This is ticker TIVC, Tivic Health Systems. It was the chart that caught my attention. The chart had a catastrophe hit it back in May and she dropped really hard and she's been down there since. And here in the last few days, she's had a massive change. Volume has come exploding in like a real tsunami. The prices broke out over the 200 and it looks really, really strong. Looking for a catalyst? We've got a soft catalyst here. The company's got good things going on, but nothing to really rip and tear it up. But the chart is really hot and you don't have to have a fresh big catalyst to get a chart to continue to run. So I'm going to share this information with you and see what you think. TIVC, she finished the day just a little over 67 cents and she was up just a little less than 50% today. Now this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ, which means you don't have to pay for any of the shares you buy or sell. Also means you can trade this stock pre-market, after-market. You can never do that with OTC. And there's a lot of money to be made on the bounces that come these pre-market, after-market periods. And there's a lot more money and volume on the major exchange. That's really where you want your stock to be, in a hot zone. And more importantly, folks, there's a lot more rules that these companies have to abide by up on the major exchange, which just makes them safer for us. So what is Tivic Health Systems all about? Well, they tell us here that Tivic Health Systems operates as a health technology company which focuses on developing and commercializing non-invasive bioelectronic medicine. Its primary product is ClearUp, though they do have another product. We're going to focus in on both of them here in a minute. ClearUp is a bioelectronic medicine for the treatment of sinus and nasal congestion pains. The company sells its product on direct-to-consumer channels through its own websites and other platforms such as Amazon.com and Walmart.com, as well as to other U.S. online retailers as well, such as Best Buy and FSA Store. Now, I'm jumping into their most recent presentation. They call these decks. They're like a digital brochure. Give you a lot of information for the company. Easy to read. Laid out real nice. Well, they've got two products that they're focused in on. One is already commercialized. It's been approved by the FDA. The other one is still in development. The one that's been commercialized is called ClearUp. This is a white label brand, which means they can sell the product to other companies who will put their own name on it, their own label. So this company isn't always going to get the credit for the product, but it is their product that's being sold. It is already FDA approved for the treatment of various sinus and allergy conditions and is in clinical trials currently for the relief of post-operative pain following sinus and nasal surgeries. Now they tell us it can be used for other applications as well. For joint disorder and tendonitis, which are pains that come from where the jaw bones connect, also can be used for migraine headaches, pain related to ear infections, and other inflammation and nerve-related conditions involving the face. 
pretty interesting product and that's already out there being sold making the company money now their other product is in development this is the wearable vagus nerve simulation they call it vns i'm probably just going to call it venus because it rolls off my tongue a lot easier the vagus nerve is a primary nerve in the body and it runs on both sides of the neck next to your jugular vein they tell us that it regulates the autonomic nervous system, neurologic, cardiac, and immune functions as well. The company recently completed a study showing that the company's non-invasive approach delivered biological impact relevant to multiple medical indications. It works on a lot of different things, including arrhythmias, hypertension, epilepsy, stroke rehabilitation, depression, anxiety, PTSD, and even diseases, Crohn's disease, IBD, irritable bowel syndrome, arthritis, and multiple sclerosis. Wow, this is their golden egg. This is what they're really interested in getting approved right now. They've got all the preliminary work done. They've got patents on it they have got a working prototype they've had reviews done they've done all the in-house stuff now they just need to get it approved by the fda and because it's a device it's not truly a pharmaceutical medicine it's a bioelectrical medicine it doesn't have to go through the same sort of trial as a pharmaceutical drug would so it gets through these trials a heck of a lot quicker and since they're making money on this product it is helping support the progress on this product now, giving us a little more information about the venous, they tell us that the vagus nerve connects all major organs, regulates autonomic nervous systems, and has effects on the cardiac, neurological, and immune systems. Now, this device is not novel. There is another product like this on the market already by another company, but theirs is an implant. The implanted VNS is an established treatment method used in epilepsy, depression, and stroke rehabilitation. However, the surgical requirements of these therapeutic devices means that a lot of people don't qualify, and they don't get the option. Well, now they've got nothing. There are no other options. Now, once this gets approved, all those people are going to have the option. They're going to have something they can use. But think about this. Even the people that do qualify for the implant, if they're given a choice between an implant or a wearable device, which do you think they're going to go for? Heck yeah, I've got to presume that the wearable device is going to be cheaper than a surgical uh, procedure, and it's got to be more convenient by a long shot. Now, as I said, they've already got all the preliminary stuff done, proofs of concept, Phase one trial, meaning it's safe, you can use it, it's not going to fry your brain or kill you, do anything det detrimental. They have a functioning prototype, market evaluation has been done, and they've got patents for it. So they are moving forward fast. So now they're going to get it into the trials, and this should happen quickly. How fast, I really don't know, but they are making headway right now. So that's what the company is all about. They've got these two products out there. One is making them money and the other one they're pushing to make them a lot more money. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Holy cow, she's exploding, folks. They tell us that her average over the last 30 days is 4.4 million. Keeping in mind, an average is somewhere in the middle. There's usually higher numbers and lower numbers. Well, today we got a real high number, 104 million. Now, because there's such a difference here, the discrepancy between the two, I dove over here to Yahoo Finance to get the historical information. Hit this button there, historical data, and you can see her activities for every single day that she trades. Love this page. It'll show you the open and the close, the high and the low of the day, and the volume of the day. Now, let me refresh this. Looks like it's a little behind. It says 90 million. Uh, there we go, 104 million. So this is what I wanted to show you, folks. Going back less than a month, we were just doing 53,000, 100,000, not doing anything. We popped here. That was on uh, the 18th. The 17th, we hit 1.5 million, 
fell back down way under a million. Then on the 23rd, had a bigger pop, 3.1 million, then fell way under a million. And then look at the last three days, folks. On the 25th, we did 66 million shares. Day after that, we did 58 million. It dropped a little bit, but holy cow, we virtually doubled that today at 104 million. We have a tsunami of volume coming into the picture right now, and there is no direct catalyst. We're going to take a look at what we do have, though. Going back to our stock information, let's take a look at that share structure. All right. When we look at the news, you're going to see that they had a public offering back in May, which is what caused the stock to fall. We had approximately 2 million shares. It was less than that. 2 million shares outstanding. The public offering put 4 million shares on the market. 4.7 million. Well, folks, that's more than tripling the amount of shares on the market now. Or in other words, you just lost two-thirds of your shareholder value. So if the stock is at a dollar, you could expect it to fall down to 40 cents, which is what it did. It fell 65% on that public offering. People were very upset that their stock got tripled. All the amount of shares, there's now three times as much. Even though it is a low float, we're down there just over 6 million. Now here's the other thing we need to pay attention to here. The public offering wasn't just for shares of stock, it was for units, and units include warrants. Well, there was uh, warrants, Class A warrants, for 4,700,000 shares, and there were Class B warrants for another 7 million shares. Warrants are coupons that get cashed in three to five years down the road, and when they're cashed in and exercised, they become a new share. Now, they don't have to wait three to five years. Their active price is 85 cents. As soon as we hit 85 cents, they're allowed to buy a share for 85 cents. Well, they're not going to do it when they're 85 cents. But if it goes up to $2 or $3, oh, heck yeah, you're going to see them exercise their warrants, which means there will be 7 million plus 4.7 million. You're looking at what, 11, 12 million more shares that will come onto the market down the road. But right now, our share count just tripled from 2 million up to 6.1 million. And that's why the stock fell and was sitting down on the floor for a long time. Market cap is now up to 2.7 million. Financials for Tivik. Well, she is making money. Over the last four years, she has had some ups and downs, but she is making more profit. See, four years ago, we were at $860,000. We know that's thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. She kicked that up to 1.2 and 1.8 million and then fell back to 1.7 million. That's a big drop here. But look at her profit margin. She was almost at 300,000 at 1.8. She dropped here, I don't know, about 30%. But she didn't drop her profit by 30%. It just went down a little bit. So she's actually making stronger profits on less revenues. Checking out her quarterly reports. Well, the same thing going on there. A year ago, we were at 376000 Now we're a little less, 337 But look at the profit margin. We've made less money, but we've made more profit. That's a good formula. We do like that. Balance sheet for Tivik. Let's not forget those three zeros. We're looking at money in the bank, basically $1.6 million. Total assets for the company, about $3.2 million. Liabilities are lower, $1.1 million, which means we have positive stockholder equity in this company of $2.1 million. So we've got a company that's making revenues, they are making profits, and they have stockholder equity. That's all looking good. All right, let's take a look at the uh, disclosures now. I know I've got two of them I want to share with you, kind of. This 8K here, we do have to take a look at this. This is a NASDAQ notification that they have been under a dollar for the last 33 days. Now, we are climbing right now fast. We were at like 63 cents. We're up to 80 cents. So we are closing in on that dollar. 
Now, there's no deadlines here. There's no slap in the face. It's not a red light warning. It's a yellow light warning. No effect to the stock. They're just being told, we're watching. You've been under a dollar for too long. So we do need to get that price up. The other one is this DEF 14A. This basically looks like a financial. They've got all the financial information in there and a lot of information about their products, about their testings, about their reviews. If you really want to do some due diligence on this company, jump into that DEF 14A that came out June 28th. You won't be let down. There's lots of it in there. All right, let's take a look at that news now. So this is that public offering. It came out on the 9th of May. We just looked at that one and you're going to see more repercussions on the chart when we look at that. Then you've got the TIFIC reports first quarter 2024 financial results. Lots of details in there about their financials. We're not going to dive into that, but if you're interested, there's where you want to go. Then we have two pieces of news here about working on a patent. TIVIC Health partners with Feinstein Institutes to advance its patent pending non-invasive cervical vagus nerve stimulation begins optimization of the NCVNS for use in clinical indications. This is one of those new things that they're using VNS for. You want more information, dive into it, folks. And then this one that came out on the 23rd. Now, there was some price activity on the market on the 23rd. They tell us that they got three more patents here in the United States and in Europe, all to do with their products, which was great news. Well, we've seen some activity, but it really just fell after this news. Then she took a crouch, and after that, on the 25th, it was a whole new game, folks. That's when the volume came into the picture. So we've got good news about this new product, their golden egg, which is going to be used in so many different procedures in the medical arena. Everything from cardio to psychiatric to diseases. Meantime, they've got a product out there that is being used for sinus congestion, but can be used for headaches and jaw pain and other such things. And that is helping them support their progress on their golden egg product. So I think this is looking good. But what really looks good is the chart. It's on freaking fire. It at least needs to be on your watch list. Oh, you want to go see it? All right, come on, let's go look at the chart. Why are you looking so dazed and confused? You know where we are. My free trading platform. My playground. This is Think or Swim. And right now we're playing with ticker TIVC, TIVIC Health Systems. Got her opened up to a one-day, one-year chart so we can see what sort of trend she's been in and what her 52-week high and low are. Well, she's been in a serious downtrend the entire year, as you're going to see when we focus in on it. But the numbers will give it away. About a year ago, we had a 52-week high of about $11.50. And within the last week, we had a 52-week low of $0.28 cents from $11.50. Now, let's focus in on what happened here. She was in a serious downtrend here, falling fast and hard, and she hit this support right here at $1.15. Bounced off of that a couple times and then launched from a buck fifteen up to three and a quarter. When she fell back, she fell right back to this strong support at a buck fifteen. And when they had their public offering at the beginning of May, that's where she was sitting, right at that strong support, and that's where she fell away from down here. So we are anticipating for her to come right back up at least to that $1.15 and then start to run once she gets on top of it. As you can see by the volume bars here, it's been very strong the last few days. Compared to the whole year, this has been the strongest. Now our oscillators, let's try to zoom in on these so you can see how much strength we've got. There's our PPO, percentage price oscillator, a lot like your MACD. MACD uses the full price, PPO uses a percentage of the price. I like my PPO better than MACD, but I use them both. As you can see, our incline, she was down underneath this red line. She needs to be on top. Well, she didn't just slightly turn up. She's turned up hard and fast and going into the positive zone. Once she gets on top of the red, she's going to get extra strength. Well, that's what's going on now with our MACD as well. 
it is coming up at a very steep incline and getting on top of this, which they call the signal line. Once you get on top of that, you start to get more power. You can see our green bars are accumulating and getting big fast. And our RSI is all the way up at 80. Now, I know a lot of people don't like red overbought, but I like my RSI in the overbought. That's when the price is rising and on fire. So this yearly chart is looking pretty good to me. Let's come on down to our six month, four hour view. So now we've got a high of $3.20. As you can see, she's been in a downtrend, but she's getting some big pop offs here over top of that 200 day SMA and coming back underneath it. Well, a lot of these are 60 to 80% jumps. So you could be making money on this stock as she is coming down. Now, right here was the public offering at the start of May. We had a 66% dilution. They tripled the stock. So we anticipated the stock to probably fall about 66%. Well, we were up here near a buck 15, a buck 20, somewhere in there. And she fell all the way down to 45 cents. That's a 66% drop. And from there, she just went sideways, not doing a whole lot because there wasn't a lot she could do. She has never been down this low before. So there are no supports for her to sit on, stand on, jump off of. There's no floor. She's in water. She's treading water right now. She's trying to keep her head above water, waiting for an SMA to come on down and save her butt. So she went sideways for a long time until the 200 got close. Then she starts stretching for it, reaching for it. Here's the 23rd. Our last piece of news when they got those three patents out for the USA and Europe. We did initially have a jump from about 34 cents up to 45 cents, eh, about a 25% gain maybe. But then she fell down to an all time low on good news. She did come back up, but then she just dribbled back down. It wasn't until the 25th she jumped from roughly 30 cents up to 67 cents over a hundred percent run pre-market. Then she fell all through the day, back down on top of her 200 day SMA, falling to the 50 and then bouncing again from 35 cents up to 85 cents. Now we're talking 125% run from this low to that high. Then she comes all the way back down again to 41 cents. And today she hit a high of 81 cents. Almost another 100% run right there, folks. So as you can see, there's a lot of volatility and there's a lot of opportunities to make money as she's climbing. She is bouncing uphill in a very nice manner. Now we get a close-up of that volume. It is really growing strong right now, folks. Our 200-day SMA has gone flat with all of this activity and is actually starting to climb. All of our other SMAs are 200 haul which most likely isn't on your chart, but it should be. The 50 and the 20 day SMA are all just now crossing the 200. These are called golden crosses. When each one of these cross, it gives a power boost to the price. You normally see it jump. Everything is looking very, very strong here, folks. And look at our oscillators. Our four hour oscillators, all of them are climbing to the moon and our RSI is still up there in the overbought at 79. I'm loving the four hour chart. Take a look at our one hour view. All right, so she was flat, not really doing anything but starting to dip and even go deeper. Then we had a little hiccup here. This was on the 17th. There's our 23rd jump and drop. Sideways activity and now she's off and running. Now I wanna put some perspective on this chart. First thing I wanna grab is my channel. I'm gonna poke the bottom green mark here. You see all these big, tall green lines? I'm gonna go right to the floor, right there. I'm gonna poke that one, and then I'm gonna drag it right up to the top right there. Well, as you can see, she is definitely, let's try to get a little closer. She is definitely jumping up near that bar over and over again, which means our next one, which we haven't had yet, could get all the way up there to a dollar two which is right up underneath that strong resistance of a buck 12, a buck 13. Now let's get another piece of information here by using our regression channel. 
what I'm going to do is poke my low bubble, and you don't have to poke the low bubble. You can poke anywhere on that day. I'll poke way up here. And all you got to do is drag it to current times and poke it again. There's your channel that your stock is running in. Now, as you can see, she dipped underneath the halfway point right here. She dipped underneath it and then shot out of this, went right out of the channel up to that blue channel mark, fell back underneath the halfway point, almost to the very bottom. Then we had another very strong run off the bottom of the channel, out of the channel to the top up here, back down to the bottom again, the bottom of this channel that she is running in. And she has now worked her way on top of the middle bar. This is a kick up. She's not down on the lower half. She is now on the upper half. And I'm expecting her not only to give us a big push bar up to this blue channel, which is up over a dollar, but I'm expecting her now to work her way outside of this channel, get out of it and break away a surge. And once she gets out of this, I'm expecting her to not only push to the blue top channel, but to actually reach for that buck 13 and try to get on top of it. Now I am expecting her to stutter, hit her head a few times on this and not exactly get through it, but she could surprise us. She could just zoom right on through that and get a good run up to those next supports or resistances we got there. Let's come on down to our five day, five minute well, we got a lot of volatility here, don't we? I mean, we get these bounces any time of day. This 100% run took off from the 200 up to the top of that blue channel and back down to the 200 all pre-market. None of that happened during the day. This one was smack dab in the middle of the day when you don't expect it. This is one o'clock in the afternoon. She took off from 43 cents up to 85 cents coming back down. Now notice she is bouncing hard off of the 200. This is really getting all of her attention. Right now, she's pushed herself up. She's above this center line of our channel, going sideways climbing with these strong rips going through the upper part of the channel. Now, I would expect her to dip to come back down to the 200. That's what she does. So I'd expect her to come down and hit this 200, maybe a little bit underneath it, you know, like over here, and then boom, surge, jump, rocket, get the heck out of this channel and run for that blue line, hit that yellow line and be out. Now you got to remember where that yellow line has taken us, right? Backing this out. Ah, we got to come all the way out to the four hour chart because it was all the way back here. This is what we're doing. We're filling that gap. Now we could take our Fibonacci and poke the top of this and then poke the bottom of it. And that will give us some algorithmic supports and resistances that we can actually trade off of and the price will respect as she's climbing her way out of this. So you've always got that option as well. So I'm liking TVIC's chart primarily. I think it's worth the watch. The volume is incredible, folks. It's coming out of nowhere right now. Tsunami on top of tsunami. And we've got lots of good information. Information coming out about their golden egg product, that Venus, V-N-S, and they have more information coming, they say, within the next six months, which could be a strong catalyst. In my opinion, it's worth putting on your watch list, but it definitely needs some more due diligence. I didn't cover everything, and I pointed out where you could get a lot of that information. So if you're really interested, dive in and start swimming, folks. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your time with me. Hope I shared something of value with you. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya, folks.